everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ram. I'm also your host, Noel McVoy. Good morning, everyone, yes. and happy Monday. That was Asaph Adonai on piano. Asaph, what song was that? That is a song called Let My People Go. I liked it. I liked the tone that you did it in <laughs> yeah, today, that too. Yeah, perfect uh, Yeah, that. nice. That was great. Well. Yeah. We have a nice, uh, easy show for you guys. We do. To start out your week. Of yeah. course, the weather isn't looking too nice, but of course, um, you can expect um, it to be clearing up. By your t- for Tuesday and Wednesday, but of course it'll. Chances are it'll be back to uh, rainy and chance of showers, and it's all spring showers and all that stuff happening all all week, pretty much today. There's a 30% chance of showers, but of course your high can be 62, and things will be warming up on Tuesday with the high of 71, and then of course your high will dip back down to the 50s. So we'll have a little peak, a break in the weather for tomorrow, but of course today, um, you know, dress for spring. Yeah. yeah. Gonna be rainy. Spring showers bring May flowers, but it is May. Flowers are already here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I uh, hope we hope you guys had a good weekend. Mm-hmm. How's yours, Scott? It was good. We had uh, it was our last uh, um, um, drop in animation, mm-hmm. so no more um, drop in animation Saturday. So that's all done with, mm-hmm. and everyone can start doing their farmers market uh, shenanigans, all that stuff. So I bought some um, onions and I got some bok choy. So I'm gonna be enjoying some stir fry for the next couple days for sure. Nice. That sounds good. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, stir fry. Uh, uh, and you graduated. Yes, that's I a, graduated. That's a big deal. Mm-hmm. I graduated on Saturday. It was really, really nice. It was a nice little ceremony. It didn't take too long, and then I had a fun party. And yeah, it was good. It was a good weekend. I'm tired, and I'm glad to be done. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But of course, uh, summer is uh, well. We're, we're beginning it for most of our summer programs here at MCAT. Mm-hmm. So if you. Uh, you um, you have any kids or know of any kids who are between the ages of nine and eighteen? So we're going we're we're starting a teen camp this year, which is different from the last couple of years, which we've done camps from between nine and thirteen. Mm-hmm. But those camps uh, we still have um, are offered to the kids. Um, it, of course, you can find out more information by going onto our website mcat.org. You click on here and you can download your very own link to our camp. So here is the list. So wildlife camp is uh, is where we go out to uh, outside, enjoy, and you. It's like a mixture of outdoor activities mixed or, mixed with some a lot of indoor activities, which include editing and basic um, video um, videography. Mm-hmm. So this it's more of our like beginning class for kids who are just trying to get into it, trying to learn about uh, videography and learning about the WMC of camera work. Um, so the wildlife camp starts on June 20th and it goes into the 24th so it's Monday through Friday and it's from 1 to 5 and of course then we have animation camp which is already full oh, yes, and there's is. still a waiting list I mean, of course uh, we're just depending upon how long the waiting list is and maybe we're just determining whether or not we're going to add an additional animation camp which we've always done in the past um, this animation the official animation camp starts on July 11th and it goes into the 15th and if we do do the bonus camp it will start on the 18th and go until the 22nd of course and then of course this year is the brand new um, zombie film or zombie workshop for uh, teens um, ages 13 to about 18 and that goes from July 25th to the 29th and the thing that's different about this is is an all-day camp happening at 9 a.m. I'm going all the way until 5 p.m. and of course uh, a lot of the time we'll be done doing makeup which will be done by I I have to get in contact with them again but of course it'll be done by Roothead Studios which do the uh, Missoula Haunted House at the fairgrounds and that's about it for a lot of um, just uh, general MCAT news. What's going on with MCAT? Uh, orientation happened last Wednesday, and if you missed it, your orientation is every second Wednesday of the month at 5.30. Um, if you want to find out more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write it out twice. You can also like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. You can like Missoula Community Access Television on Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook as well. And to find out more information, just check us out on MCAT.org. But, of course, I, I did get a chance to uh, shoot a nice little live video, which I'll show you guys later in the show. I mean, if we have enough time at the end of the show, I'll, I'll show it. And I did a nice little live from MCAT's animation drop-in. Yeah, it's pretty cool how Facebook is doing this, like, live video thing. Mm-hmm. It's I like, think that's neat. I think neat. it's, like, they bought Periscope, or it's their own version of Periscope. Yeah, I think it's cool. It's kind of neat to be able to, like, yeah, you're capturing the moment of on Facebook. Mm-hmm. I think that's sweet. Yeah. And uh, yeah. somebody from San Antonio, Texas, watched the live 
video as well. It's, it's crazy. How can you tell? That's so weird. Because when you were doing the live video and you're like recording and then you, it, it blings when somebody's watching, it's like, oh, this person is watching right now. Oh, weird. Yeah, it's crazy. Huh, that's interesting. Cool. Yeah, what a cool feature. Mm -hmm. But of course, there's always uh, MCAT.org and... Mm -hmm. um, Yes. Yeah. And to you guys tonight, it's Monday, so we've got some city council tonight. That'll be at the city council chambers at 7 p.m. Now, it's usually just the general meeting, um, and it looks like Scott will have more information about that. Yes. So but what of course, can we expect uh, tonight? Oh, we can expect uh, some rezoning requests and conditional use requests. You know, it, this, it, they're basically going to be talking about the Southgate Mall. Oh, yeah. A big yeah. thing is that they're going to be, it's going to be a public hearing about the, uh, the Southgate Mall because they're going to increase the road. I think it's Mary Street mm -hmm. that goes from... Um, the the mall to like uh it's just an additional um street from reserve to straight to the mall if you, oh if really like a, a right through street you know that you know um there's a big there's that big fairly long road yeah. that goes for that's between um bob wards and the mall yeah that little yeah. thing they're going to extend it longer and connect it to um reserve street oh that's pretty cool yeah just an additional is... entrance way and yeah. of course um one of the things is that they're going to build on to the mall so they're going to build a nine plex movie theater inside the mall cool it, it's it's only natural because it seems like every mall that i've ever been to that's has not in missoula theater. has a movie theater yeah i agree I totally agree. So it's good that they're doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be interesting. And plus, there's so much space. Like, the mall's got so much space already. It's not like they're encroaching on anyone else's space. Yeah, I mean, they, they so have if, plenty of, I mean, yeah. like, you know, sure, sometimes the parking lot fills up. And, um, I mean, they're, they've never really had a big issue with parking because mm -hmm. there's always, like... A huge parking lot? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it's like, yeah, so I feel like the city would be more inclined to give them these rezoning and give them this space because they're not really encroaching on anyone else's yep. property. Um, so I need, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about programming. So there's mm -hmm. some new programs happening tonight and tomorrow night. There's a whole bunch of brand new programs. We have um, Right In At Work. I think it's their very last um, talk, and it's, um, it's part five of a... Uh, the, and it's pretty much the end of their series. It's like basically um, writing for work. It's like you as a writer working with writer block, writing block, and so on and so forth. But this one particularly is on late night tonight at 11 instead of like 4 p.m. like it usually is most Mondays. But I guess that's just the way it, it works. Maybe they have bad language. I don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> anything that has bad language and it's uh, VDA is after 10.30 p.m. here on MCAT. So oh, that's after 10.30 p.m., it's pretty, pretty much you can say pretty much whatever you want it, it's ridiculous how like loose we are with that really that's like, funny like a lot of times like there's a lot of shows that there's like oh you can't say you know the f word or whatever yeah, like that. Say, on yeah. mcat you can say the f word after 10 30 p.m that's hilarious it's ridiculous okay cool. most people don't know that people, no. and people are too scared to even try it yeah because you know uh, i i showed a series um I, I produced a series here from uh, my buddies in deer lodge they did a show um called um theater impossible for a, uh, for a little while they did like probably like 20 episodes mm -hmm. which is like crazy yeah. And I showed them, and they're dropping F-bombs left and right. Ah, so, so you're like, okay, you got to be on It's like a reality and, show, an yeah. unedited reality show. So they got a kick out of that, and they had some people watching it for sure. Oh, nice. That's good. But, of course, they stopped doing it because they don't have somebody who's really into doing that kind of thing. Yeah. But, of oh. course, um, uh, we have that's that's just one of the programs. We have um, Transforming Healthcare, and it's, uh, it's usually a Providence talk at the Providence Health Center. And that's the one that our very own Neil Wells shot. You remember him from last Wednesday and when we were, like, harassing him for skipping school because yep. he was going to the Bernie Sanders thing. Yep. And speaking of Bernie Sanders, um, Donald Trump is coming to Montana. No yes. way. Yeah. No way. But Where? He, well, he's going to start in North Dakota, oh and he's he's going to go probably to Billings. I, I, I doubt he's going to go to Missoula. I'm no. Pretty, I, I'm not sure. It, it, it really depends. He's he's going on. A, he's still going on the tour. He's still, you know, he's this is him campaigning now rather than the primary thing. But he still has to cleanse the primary vote, even though he, like he's running basically unopposed. There's probably about two or three like stragglers who are just like, oh, I didn't know I was running against you, kind of. Yeah. Thing. So. Um, wow. When was that announced? Uh, just last over the weekend, it was in the newspaper. Something about um, him going to be coming to uh, Montana. But he'll probably go a, to Billings. I bet he'll go to Billings. I bet he won't even come to Missoula. I don't know. If I he comes to Missoula, you have to go to Missoula County. <laughs> yeah, I'd be very, very, very surprised if he came to Missoula. Mm -hmm. And I very and I wonder what his rally would be like if he did come. I don't know. 
Yeah. You wow. have to buy it. <laughs> interesting. That's very interesting. And of course, uh, tonight, uh, tomorrow is the community lecture series. Mm -hmm. uh, Noel shot that for the I last did. couple of uh, months. Yeah, I did that for a whole, yeah, it was six weeks. So it looks like tomorrow is the panel. Yep. So this one will be where all the speakers from over the six weeks or five weeks that they presented will be talking about uh, each of their stories and answering questions. Cool. So it's, yeah. it's probably the last community lecture series. Yes, it is. And of course, yeah. then there's um, President Lecture Series with Hoffman. It's a Hoffman lecture. Um, they, I, I did the seminar, it was last week, and this week is the lecture. So they do a seminar and a lecture. Um, a seminar is more like a person to person, like, uh, it's more like a really cool, like, you know, room you're talking to them. Yeah. And lecture is more like you can't talk to them while they're on stage, and they're just like, hey guys. Yeah. I'm President Lecture Series. Yeah. yeah. And then Global Public Health again, which is always shot at the Gallagher Business Building. And they always have it like on two, they usually do it on like uh, Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. at the Gallagher Business Building. And they talk about Global Public Health. And it's always interesting. Um, but of course, um, I would have showed you guys this with the tagline of when these programs will be on, but you have to check MCAT.org. We're definitely having some major technical problems with our. Final Cut Pro program mm -hmm. that we use to show all these videos and stuff. But for right now, uh, we're going to use it from the TriCaster that we are using for to broadcast to you guys this morning on MCAT. So without further ado, here is all the new stuff, and when we come back, we'll have Noel with your Monday and Tuesday events. I really do think it's more like being a novelist, because when you're a writer, you're kind of like absolving yourself from the total responsibility of the product, where when I now write something and I'm running the show, Everything on that screen ultimately is on me, you know, so I'll sit down with the director and I'll tone them and I'll tell them no we shoot This conversation this way like it's literally you have to take responsible for everything that goes on the screen there So actually for me for someone like me it was a natural fit, but you know, there's the shitty part of the job I had to fire people I'm screaming at you know an actor screaming at me and I'm grabbing him and throwing him against the wall telling him he cannot treat other people that way like well, Medicaid expansion would help with reimbursement for services, um, but it doesn't provide like a grant program for communities to um, provide, you know, some sort of specialized care. But again, maybe the legislators could um, ex expound on it. But and I, I think that would benefit everyone. Um, I think the teaching would be more interesting and I think the students would get more out of that intellectually. But it's the model we have. The model we have is the one we have. It's, it's kind of a menu buffet approach. Um, you know. And I know we have to go but to complicate matters further I have to bring it up because, because enrollment is such an issue for everybody and it has been for a while. Everybody wants gen eds because it's the bread and butter. So, you know, the gen eds that, that were expressive arts are now, they're across campus. You can take an expressive art in many, many disciplines. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be a discipline that is considered the arts. Same with ethics. I mean, in theater, we're, we're thinking about, okay, well, let's propose an ethics course. It's large and it's powerful, but it also is very delicate. Each of these layers is um, of pigmented clay that you see here overlaying to give a kind of landscape is about uh, half a millimeter thick, and yet it doesn't flake off. Uh, so it's actually a remarkable technical achievement in the firing to make, to make this particular bow. Because that, that, they have no permanent residence. They move from one place to another place. And this is a immunization uh, program. Uh, this is uh, one of the, this I am presenting the country average. Otherwise, there is again strong, uh, there is a lot of variation between regions, between rural and urban setups and so on. Hey guys, we're back, and this is what's going on in your community today and tomorrow. So at first we've got Monday things, as always. We start at 11 a.m. over at the Missoula Public Library to uh, do some open hours in the makerspace. So from 11 to 2.30, you can learn how to use the equipment or work on a project of your choice. Over at Montgomery Distillery is our Moscow Monday that starts at noon, noon to eight. A dollar from each cocktail sold that goes to a, a different nonprofit in the Missoula, Montana area. Um, they usually uh, go towards their their criteria for nonprofits. If you want to be donated to, is um, you have to do like environmental stewardship, uh, something with children, and then I think feeding the homeless and hungry. So that's yeah. Uh, there's Bridge Group at the Missoula Senior Center at 1 p.m. 
This is uh, the Beginner's Brush Up Group. And then we've got Duplicate Bridge over at Garden City Bridge Club, the Duplicate Bridge Club that's also at one. Uh, and then we go back over to le Computer Electronics in their makerspace at the Missoula Public Library at 3 o'clock. So you can learn how to use various electronic platforms um, and work on some projects. Yeah, so that's from 3 to 6. Over at the base of the Warehouse Mall is their word play that starts at 4. It's word games, poetic exploration, and free writing and expansion. At the Top Hat Lounge, you've got Raising the Dead, the live recorded shows of the Grateful Dead, it's starting at 5, so 5 to 7. It's a happy hour, it's an audio show, it's visual, so you get all the Grateful Dead music and movies that you want, uh, music videos that you want, from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, so get 40 years. Over in Florence, at their Volunteer Fire Department, the Civic Club is hosting a spaghetti dinner for the community of Florence, so that starts at 5 p.m. this evening. Then over at the Missoula Public Library at 6 is Intro to Email. Uh, you can learn the basics of creating an email account, write a message, include attachments, and everything that you need to. Uh, over at Imagination Brewing Company, they've got their open mic night at 6. So if you are a musician, go down there and jam out. Uh, Plonk also at 6 is their service industry night. If you work in the service industry, they'll give you an exclusive menu for deals on appetizers and drinks. Exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, bar is going to be at the Sweatshop Studio at 6.30. It's $12 to drop in. At the Red wa Redbird Wine Bar at 7 is Cash for Junkers. Over at the Roxy Theater, uh, they're doing their first folio celebration. They're showing Romeo and Juliet. You guys don't know what the first folio is. Uh, Shakespeare's book, uh, someone that compiled all of Shakespeare's... It's pretty uh, good. Yeah, so someone that compiled all of Shakespeare's, after Shakespeare's death, compiled all of Shakespeare's written works that he did of his plays and compiled it into a book. So this yes. is like 400 or 500 years old and it is at the University of Montana yes. and they're at Montana Museum of Art and Culture. So it goes until the 31st. So in celebration of that, the Roxy Theater has been putting on movies. Yes. So at uh, 7.30, they're going to be playing Romeo and Juliet at the Roxy Theater. And this is the updated version, so it's got Leonardo DiCaprio Oh, that one? It. They have the exact lines from Shakespeare, mm -hmm. but they put it in the context of the modern day. Yep. Where it's like, oh, when they say, give me a long, my longsword, they do a close-up on their gun that says longsword. I'm like, oh, really? It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, it's pretty good. So that'll be at the Roxy Theater um, at 7.30. Yep. And then, but of course, I, I do, do need to give a plug to the um, the book because there's a, there was only seventy plus uh, copies mm -hmm. ever made of this first folio mm -hmm. ever, and there's only twenty three that are survived oh, wow. and that are being seen. This is like all around the world of mm -hmm. the very first draft of the first folio. But you know, before it was like translated into other languages and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. But back in those days, it would cost like I think it was. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like a pound for the oh, book, wow. yeah. which is it was today is the equivalent of two hundred and fifty dollars wow, for one of those it. books. Yeah, yeah. I went to the museum and I learned a lot. And so it opens at three. And how long does it stay open to? Well, I believe it's um, open to the public. I think it's open for the public like even longer now since school's out because they used they had a lot of classes and the mm -hmm. English department like took a lot of tours there and stuff like that for part of your class. Okay. But I think um, they'll be open. It's the Montana Museum of Art and Culture, which is in the Part TV building, like right in the corner. It's basically like you go see the front through the Adams Center, and it's like all on the other side of the building, technically okay. on that side. You know, not the. Uh, it's not on the um, the radio or the, the indoor theater, mm -hmm. but it's like in the lobby area. Just go to the lobby area. You can't miss it. They have a whole bunch of balloons and a person just like at there twenty four seven to make sure that there's no funny work business with no book. Yep. Because that book is probably one of the priceless. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, I've got one more event for Monday. We've got Blues Monday at the Badlander at 9. So that's what's going on today in your community. We're switching gears. We're going to Musical Notes with ASAP at our night. First of all, Noel, I want to congratulate you personally on your graduation. Thank you so much, ASAP. You have your journalism degree, is that it? I do, yes. Yeah, is that, is that um, bachelor or master's? It's bachelor's. Good for you. Thank you. I want to follow your career with interest because I want to see you on NBC one day. <laughs> Thank you, <Lisa. laughs> Okay, now let's get to our story here. Um, in the Old Testament, the Lord tells his messenger to tell the king of Egypt, let my people go. Our guest who played the messenger, there he is on the screen, in the 1956 movie The Ten Commandments is the one and only John Charles Carter, known to the world as Charlton Heston. Charlton Heston 
he was an American actor and a political activist. Of course, I want to get and focus more on the accomplishments part. Anyway, as a Hollywood star, he appeared in over 100 films over a course of 60 years. Can you believe that? Wow. Playing Moses, his most iconic role, obviously, in the Ten Commandments, which where he received his first Golden Globe Award nomination. And then he did a movie called Ben-Hur where he won the Academy Award for Best Actor in 1959. He appeared in a movie in 1961 called El Cid. And of course, my personal favorite Charlton Heston movie, even if it may not be what they would call the best by the Hollywood world, my personal favorite is the 1968 Planet of the Apes. <laughs> and here's a classic line from this. Taylor, why did you run away? Security police. I am in charge of this man. No longer, madam. He's now in the custody of the Ministry of Science. Take your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a classic line for those. And, and we can see him in the uh, Planet of the Apes. That's just such a cool movie, which has stood the test of time after all these times. Yeah, they've done some remakes, but of course, the Heston's the best. Now my final words very quickly about Heston. In 1944 he enlisted in the Air Force and he served two years as a radio operator, an aerial gunner aboard the B-25 Mitchell and he was stationed in the Alaskan Aleutian Islands with the 77th Bombardment Squadron of the 11th Air Force and he reached the rank of Staff Sergeant and he, while he was in the military he rose to fame so they used him to record classified military um, narrations for the Department of Energy. So that's kind of an accomplishment, you know, getting famous while you're in the, in the military and being used that way. And then his first professional movie was a movie called Dark City in 1950. From there, he uh, went on to do The Greatest Show on Earth in 1952, which was one of those circus movies and of course by 1956 again he ends up becoming an iconic star in the Ten Commandments and then also he, he, you know I have to like shorten this out because it's impossible to do everything that this man has done in his twilight years before we lost him in 1985 to 1987 he starred on a soap opera called The Colbys which was a spin-off of Dynasty with John Forsyth and um then, of course, one of his other Twilight accomplishments, in 1992, he appeared in the A&E Cable Network reading the Bible, and they called it Charlton Heston Presents the Bible, reading from the King James. And then after we lost him, his legacy he was commemorated in 2014 for a U.S. postal stamp, April 11th. Nice. So that's just kind of a brief flyover of the career of a man who's career spans 60 yeah. years. Like I, I remember awesome. seeing him in the 90s, all yeah. over the 90s. He was in the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, Two Lives. Yeah, he just, his career from the time he started till the time he retired, he was constantly in the movies and yeah. television. Nice. I, my constantly. favorite my favorite role he was in, he was in Wayne's World 2. Yeah. He, oh, was he? He was the yeah, gas was station there. attendant, and like um, um, Mike Mike Myers was like, oh, can we get a better actor to play uh -huh. this part? I know it's small. <laughs> and then Charles and Heston like, gets replaced <laughs> in, in the movie. It's just like, oh, Cherry Lane. That's yeah. what those days. That's so that's pretty cool that Charlton Heston, he, whatever your personal favorite movie is, he left the world some great films. Yeah. And being commemorated on the stamp, that's a great way to end your career as far as I'm concerned. I think so what too. What a great legacy. Yeah, you're on So stamp. I'll stop right there. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Asaf. Sure. That was Musical Notes with Asaf Adonai. And when, and when we come back, we'll have Tuesday events right after this art clip.
we're back, and this is what's going on in your community on Tuesday. So, uh, starting over at, at 10 a.m. over the public library, we've got a couple events there. The open hours in the makerspace it starts at 10, so 10 to 6, learn how to use the equipment or work on a project of your choice. And then we stay at the public library at 10.30 for Tiny Tales. As for ages babies birth through three years, they sing songs, learn finger plays, hear nursery rhymes. All right, so uh, last Friday. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Yes, Last sir. Friday, I went to Tiny Tales because my niece was there, and you know, I, I checked it all out. And it, it was, it's like a kind of like chaos. Is it chaotic? Yeah, it's really chaotic. The kids are just kind of running around, and then there's uh, each like group of like parents and child pair have books and they're reading to each other. But it, it, I, I wasn't there when they were doing the whole finger plays. Or okay, okay. Singing or so. It, so it's pretty loose and pretty chaotic. And they all just kind of read to each other, and there's no like real structure. No. Good, great, thanks, Scott. I'm yeah. glad that you went and checked it out. So now that people know, okay, great. <laughs> well, I had a reason. Yeah. Because if you go to these kids' things, you need a reason. You, you, you can't, do, just, you can't go just go there and be like, up. "Hey, how's it going?" Yeah. Like, it's what weird. are you doing? It's like, uh, nothing. I just want to check it out. Yeah. yeah, you can't just check it out. No. You have to have a reason to check. it out. Because you can go to the children's museum whenever you want, because you know it's a museum. Yeah, they got some cool stuff there. Yeah. 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 False advertising, though. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Got really awkward and you know, yeah. decided to leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. Okay. Well, over at Roots Afro Sports Center, they've got their preschool play group starting at 11. $8 drop in, $12 for siblings. Uh, they set up different activities and stations around the gym, and then parents and children get to rotate and choose what they want to do. Over at the Children's Museum of Missoula, starting at 11, they've got soap boats. So you can craft your own soap boat and then see how far it goes. Before cool. it dissolved in the water. Yeah. Uh, over in the Alps boardroom there, you've got Shooting the Bull Toastmasters. It starts at noon. This is a lively Toastmasters club that'll uh, help you increase your public speaking, grow your vocabulary, and increase your confidence. Uh, the Alps boardroom is in the Florence building. Over at the Public Library, they've got Young Adult Volunteer Orientation at 3.30. You can learn about ways to volunteer, uh, play some games to learn skills, and eat some chocolate. Over at Missoula Aging Services, starting at four, is a caregiver support group. This is a support group for family members of an adult, older adult of a person with a disability. Uh, you can call 728-7682 for more information. Over at the Learning Center at Red Willow, they've got Yoga Warriors at four. This is a specific and special yoga program designed for veterans and their caregivers to help with PTSD and sleeping problems. Sweat Shop has got Turbo Kick that starts at 4.30. It's an interval-based full-body workout that begins with a sports-specific warm-up. Yeah. What a great name. That would be an awesome name for a band. Turbo, Turbo Kick. Kick. It would. Hey, man, you going to Turbo Kick? I was like, oh, man. Oh, I missed it. It's like, oh, you man, you totally missed everything, man. Yeah. Turbo Kick was the greatest thing ever. She got to Turbo Kick. I was like, oh, I'll go next time. I was like, there isn't going to be next time because they, this is their fa farewell, farewell um, tour. I was like, what? <laughs> You know they're gonna have a multiple farewell tour. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know how some bands are. It's like going out of business for you know, uh, you know, like uh, six years. A furniture store. Yeah. You know, it, it always goes out of business. They always say that, and they keep going forever. <laughs> and that's when Scott went to a concert. <laughs> that's when I overheard them talking about the concerts, and, and like some people have the worst conversations. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> you hear people just like, oh, so I was just like climbing up the mountain, and it was like, oh yeah, it's super tight. <laughs> and then I rolled down the mountain and was like, oh yeah, I, was like, I, I caught so much speed. <laughs> and then I got a tattoo to commem commemorate it. See this? It's awesome. It's it's a white tattoo. You really can't see it unless glow it's like the, the right lighting. Yeah, glow in the dark. Duh. <laughs> it's a brown tattoo, so you always know. But like, could you imagine like a, a new fad is that everybody gets brown tattoos on their fingers? No, that'd be weird. <laughs> so yeah. disgusting. That'd be super disgusting. Yes, yeah, Scott. I, you should never be a tattoo artist. <laughs> That's what I do to people. It's just like, why'd you put brown on my fingers? It's like, oh, then you oh, no, yeah. <laughs> it's new. It's new fat. It's like, it is like, yeah, totally. <laughs> oh well, okay. So go to concert with Scott because he'll be fun, but don't get tattoos from him. Okay. That's what we just learned in that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, we're moving on. Over at Pineview Park, we've got Fall from the Parks. It starts at 5. Uh, they, I believe every Tuesday night they do a different park, and then they play Fall from it. Yeah. So it's Pineview Park tonight, tomorrow night. Uh, and then over at the Missoula Public Library, they've got a communication lecture that starts at 6. It's a free lecture. Uh, it's about learning compassionate communication. Yeah, so that will be in the boardroom. 
Uh, over at Red Willow Center at 6, they've got a movie. They've got a quantum activist movie screening. So Amit uh, Goswami, who is a theoretical quantum physicist, is a pioneer in the field of what is called the primary of consciousness. So it's an award-winning documentary that explores his life and his work. Top Hat Lounge has got the Picking Circle at 6. Uh, this is for bluegrass oriented musicians to come down and jam out in the raised seating booth in front of the sound area. Uh, over the public library, we've got a commu community creative writing workshop at 6 p.m. from 6 to 7 at 30 in the Makerspace. And then at the Good Food Store, uh, they've got a cooking class, but it's hands on knife skills. It starts at 6.30. It's $35 if you bring your own knife, or it's $70 uh, if you go and buy the knife that they've got there. So there's going to be learning cutlery, cutlery basics from sharpening and maintenance tips to a variety of hands-on demonstrations. And then over at the public library, uh, we've got System Check at 6.30. This is the official gamers club for ages 19 and under. African dance classes at the Senior Center at 7. Um, $10 per class or $35 for four classes. Uh, adult trampoline and tumbling is at Ms. Mode Gymnastics at 7.30. This is for ages 12 and up. Um, and then Adult TNT is over at Roots Acro Sports Center. That's at 7.30, and that's for ages 16 and up. And that looks like that's what I've got for you guys. Cool. So as always, check out MissoulaEvents.net, the University of Montana website, the Missoulian and the Independent for more events going on in your community. I usually get all of my events from MissoulaEvents.net, so you can go there and see what I've talked about, and then you can also check out other things I did not mention. And so now it looks like we are going to do a live, check out our live video from our stop motion animation class that happened on Saturday. I'm trying to. I'm just. I just don't want it to play right away. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? Here, I, I shot a little live video from our very last um, stop animation last Saturday, and here is a little taste of what um, you guys basically see on our Saturday drop-ins. Hey, everybody! We are here live at MCAT during our very last Saturday drop-in, and uh, I'm going to give you a nice little tour of what's going on. We have about 11 kids making some live-action videos over here. We have our very own Felix. So Felix, uh, how many pictures do you have so far? 2,728. Wow, how long have you been working on this video? For about three days. Cool. Uh, and you, how, much, how many pictures do you want, are you going to try to um, take today? Well, I'd be surprised if I could get in 2,750. C4. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, we have C4 right there, and um, I'm going to continue on over in this room, and we'll, we'll show you a little bit more of that later. Um, over here, we have um, Colin. He's one of our uh, veteran stop animators. He's doing a stop animation right now with Legos. He brought some of his own Legos, which we definitely encourage. And this is Neil. I'm Neil. Neil is also one of the um, counselors here that help out with our Saturday drop-in, as well as a bunch of these kids um, making some live-action videos. No. I mean, oh, not live-action. Sorry. Stop, anima stop animation. Hey. So, C4. What, what's the scene you guys are setting up? Probably redraw the scene. What we're doing is he, um, corner. he is trying to take this and then he's trying to take it too. This is a droid and it's trying, if it gets the crystals, then it will get eternal power and kill all the good guys. So the good guys are trying to protect this, but they don't notice him. Wait, so I got a question for you too. Huh. That's wonderful. So now that's basically our studio. Over here, you of course, you can see our whole kind of like studio set up here at MCAT, 500 North Higgins. And this will be going on until about 5 p.m. today. Um, there's some more kids over here doing some interesting things. Uh, here's Cash. What are you doing, Cash? Stop it. <laughs> Cash is just doing, uh, just, you know, just messing around. And, of course, uh, these kids right here are making some live-action horror film. No, baby, get a little bit more in so it works. This is uh, Willie. Hi! And he's doing some... Um, 
live action. What's your live action about? Uh, it's basically like... Scary movie! Yeah, well, we made a... Sequel to MCAT Ghost. Yeah, The Ghost of MCAT. It's a sequel, so... Is that the hotel one that you guys... No, did? it's no. the one we did, I think, last time. Last All three week. of us were yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the one oh, where, no. um, like, we use the expo marker for so blood. You this know? isn't super yeah. strange, bros. Yeah. Hmm. It was really scary, but fun. Uh, so are you making the trailer, or oh, are you making the, the actual movie? It's a trailer, it's a trailer because... There we go. Okay. C4 well, thanks, guys. Right and um, we'll wait. just go around for one more time through around MCAT. All right, go, go, go. Get ready to go. All right, so they're filming a live-action video. So MCAT does a lot of, like, stop in, drop in, animation. But also they uh, get a chance to do some live-action as well. And, yeah, just stay tuned, and you guys get a... See and have a good time. You know, the, this is our very last Saturday drop in here at MCAT, and we'll be finishing up. Uh, and next week, we'll probably just have like a party and whatnot. All right, thank you. Okay, nice, so, Scott. Yeah, good. That, that was, was a nice little live thing. I, I had it, I did it, I did verbatim, so it's kind of it's really hard to really think of what, what I was trying to say and try to get out there. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, all the kids that you guys saw have been some of our regulars. They usually come every single weekend, which is really fun. It's fun to hang out with them. And they're they're a good time. Those kids are fun. And they're smart and they're creative. And yeah, and, but it's, it's like cool. with the, like um, Willie and those girls, they were making like a horror trailer for the movie, but they lost the footage because I, I like I taught them how to delete old footage so they so they can you know make more. And footage. they deleted theirs. So basically, it was like a snake eating its own tail. That's mm -hmm. the, the that's the effect of it all. And I do have a very special video that one of our kids made. He made a documentary style um, stop animation video about a bottle cap. And it's, I thought it gets really good. I think he did a really good job. This is uh, one of our two kids who showed up later in the day. This is um, Jack from Jack and Mason. And they're, they're like the Hall and Oats of our kids. They are, yeah. All right, here they are. I was once friends with the cat. He was an only child. Um, his parents were very nice. Um, but he was just so different from all the other kids. He was, uh, he was great at school. He, he, um, got along with a lot of people, but he was just so different from others. He was just, just didn't fit in. He wasn't like a human at all. But he talked, and he was really nice to me, and so we became friends, and, uh, um, he started, started thinking that something was missing in his life. And I think I knew what he was talking about. I think, I swear I get what he was talking about. He was talking about how there was something missing in his life and he was trying to figure it out. But then he finally found out and he was missing a bottle. He once was part of the bottle, and um, that's what he was missing. So he ran away from his home. Man, what can I say? Like at first, I, I just thought it was you know a, a stupid bottle cap, but you know it showed me things that I never thought was possible. You know, maybe that there is something in this world that we can't explain. That the world as we know it isn't what we think it is. Tell us about your experiences with the bottle cap. Who yeah. was he? As a it person. Was, he was a great bottle cap. He, uh, he was on many, many Cokes and many different bottles as, a, as when his life went on. You know, without, without bottle cap, I feel different. I, I can't. He really gave me power and strength go and on my life. I just, I don't know. Who cares about a bottle cap? So before bottle caps were, were gone, and they were my life, and they, they were my savior. They just helped me a lot, and now they're gone, so I'm sad now, and yeah, I'm, so, I'm really sad. I mean, he's he has brown, huge afro, and like he's amazing. I love him. I met him a day ago, and he's my closest friend because he's the longest. I've known him the longest. 
I love you, Bob. Bottle Cap is so ignorant. He doesn't listen to anything I say or anything I do. I hate Bottle Cap. He's like the worst person on the world. He here, he stole from a bank. I hate him. Wait, so many people loved him and so many people hated him. He ran away from home and he was never seen again. We will all remember him as Cap, the guy that gave us hope with his ability to close. He was looking for Bottle and he did not, wait, his mission was to look for Bottle and he did not succeed and he was never found again. We will all miss you, goodbye and good night. if I don't see you later. Beautiful documentary about that podcast. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Hilarious. I love that everyone took that seriously. That was funny. Yeah, he, he totally did it. And I was just like, I'll help you. This is a quick little interview is about Bottle Cap. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I, yeah, these kids are hilarious and they have a lot of. They, for sure, I, I was taking it really easily that day, yeah. for sure. I, I kind of let the kids like express themselves in the way that they should. And of course, a lot of them are just like, I need you to make this movie for me, that kind of, <laughs> like, they have yeah. that kind of mentality a lot. Yeah, yeah. When they could clearly do it on their own, like Jack did it on his own, and he did a great job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I highly encourage that. Yes. But I'll show you the, I'll give you the keys, and you have to turn them. That kind of thing. Okay. But... I am glad that they're over, and this coming Saturday is going to be our big party. We're yep. going to eat pizza and watch all the movies that we've made over the past eight or nine months. So that's yeah, it's crazy how long yeah. we did it for. Mm -hmm. We yeah. only took like maybe like three weeks off or whatever. Yep. Yep, we'll have a good, yeah, about a month off. And, and of course, we'll be back weekends. on um, in September after Labor Day weekend. Yes, we will. That's the plan, at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But of course, if you want to find out more information about our morning show in Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice. We made you read out twice. You can like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. You can follow M Missoula Community Access Television on Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. You can also like us on Facebook. And to find out more information about MCAT, go to MCAT.org. And of course, um, if you're interested in talking about the future of the um, Southgate Mall site, they have the uh, city council meeting tonight at 7. They usually, usually hold the public hearing after the uh, public comments, so you might want to come like maybe 7.30ish, depending upon how long the public comment section because it really takes forever. <laughs> and tonight is also the Bonner Milltown Community Council meeting, and it's not going to be held at this Bonner school. It's going to be held at the, I think it's um, a, some, the, the church over in East Missoula. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. That's a nice can't remember, but it's the church in East Missoula. It's the only one. Yeah. The church. I'm sure there's a couple churches, but I think it's the one that most people think about that has like a little community, community center. But of course, that's happening both tonight at 7 p.m. And there's just definitely a lot to talk about for sure. Yeah. But well, that's enough for our show to talk about. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, thanks for that wonderful segment, ASAP. Sure, I tried. I, I, I'm glad you were able to help. Yeah. Well, everyone, for Wicked Missoula, my name is Noel McFoy. And I'm Scott Ram. Here's Asaph Adonai. We'll see you guys all Wednesday.